Good afternoon, my dear friends and brothers who listen to us through different media. Today, I want to bring you a topic that checks all the previous points to see if something needs to be added. Our God is so great that He continues to give us biblical revelation to confirm that in 2024, at the Festival of Tabernacles, He will come for us, and we will spend an eternity with Him. He is already giving everything. There is no chance of it spreading further. The extension in quotes that this world has had a perverse generation to the utmost where the human being is disturbed by all the countless things of evil on earth where they call good evil and evil good. And the Lord has had so much mercy that he is announcing his day to us. It's not that I came out to say what it looked like to me the day, and I made it fit here. No, it's not my revelation in any way. The Lord says in His Word that understanding will increase in the last times, precisely in the book of Daniel. See all the videos on this channel, with perfect mathematics, that everything points out to September 17th to 18th, 2024, and ends on that date. Without a doubt, knowledge has increased. As Daniel says, it increased both for evil and good, and where we, the children of God, have found in his word those hidden things that he says Jeremiah would also let us know. These are the great and hidden things. I always have a section for people who get scared about the day and time. No one knows, right? Let's see all that is on our channel here. The Father knows the time and also knows the day, of course, and he does nothing without first notifying his servant. Do not be an obstacle to what the Lord wants and he is transmitting to his people in the parable of the ten virgins. As I said previously, the voice of the watchman was heard. Here he comes. Many are the voice for those who hear this to get ready. So do not be an impediment to the Lord. Listen to me lest he find himself fighting against God as the same scripture says. Everyone knows that everyone will be measured. We will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So do not be afraid because what I speak is from the Lord and is accurate, and these words are faithful and true. On the 18th, I hope to also obtain my crown which you also want no one to take from you. You must be a watchman and preach that Christ comes at the Feast of Tabernacles. That is the order that the Lord has given me, speaking for me. But thank God we are already thousands. And we will be many more until that day millions of people will hear the voice of the watchman saying, Here comes the groom. Here comes the husband. We must be very clear that although some people say they are prepared, they are not ready for some reason. The Lord is warning. If you are prepared, glory to God, glory to God if you are ready. But let the message reach the other people who were lukewarm, and suddenly, the Lord was calling. Don't be an obstacle because many were drowsy and fell asleep until they heard the voice and knew exactly when the Lord was coming. If you are prepared, prepare even more and let others hear the voice too. Let's get into today's topic, which we see in the chart. We see a line with this since 1948, and we all know that this date is the date that Israel re-emerged as a nation. May 14th, precisely in 1948. Then the Lord said, speaking of the fig tree that is Israel, in Matthew 24, the words, Truly I tell you that this generation will not pass until all this happens. Many have told me and asked if this chronology with the Gregorian calendar can be correct. Today, I explain precisely what Adi Aviv is because years of the Lord are years from Aviv to Aviv, that is, from spring to spring. Israel resurfaced on May 14, 1948. I am transferring it to the Hebrew calendar on the 11th of the month 5th of the year X. But what interests me is that when I see this, I have to count 80 Gregorian years, but it happens that it is more or less the same because from Aviv to Aviv, the year of the Lord is constituted. We are going to see it here in the following chart, Exodus chapter 12 which says, Thus spoke Jehovah to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, 
This month will be the beginning of months. For you, this will be the first of the months of the year. From this, I understand that there is a month that indicates the year. You leave today in the month of Aviv. When did Israel leave Egypt? In the month of Aviv. You can read Exodus 23 verse 15. And you will keep the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread as I commanded you in the time of the month of Aviv. For in it you came out of Egypt, and no one will appear before me empty-handed. Deuteronomy 16 verse 1 You will keep the month of Aviv, and make Passover to the Lord your God, because the month of Aviv brought you out of Egypt. That is why the month of Aviv is established. Many have thought that the guide of the moon was fundamental which is true is fundamental, but it is not the first factor. The first factor is Aviv. What does spring mean? This spring, like in the entire earth, is at one point in the twelve months, at one point. There is no other. Knowing this fact, we are going to go now to Genesis 1 verse 14. God then said, Let there be lights, that is, the sun and moon, in the expansion of the heavens to separate the day from the night and serve as signs for the seasons for days and years, this is already explained on this channel. Please see the two videos on this channel for confirmation of the first day of the year of the Lord, but clearly we see that the word seasons in Hebrew is the word move, which means festivals, so the moon and the sun are there to mark or indicate the feasts of the Lord, the days and the years, and obviously the months are taken for granted. So once we have this information, we are going to return here, for a second please, to this third image. There the moon marks the beginning of the month of the year. That is, there is a moon of the twelve or thirteen moons of the year that will indicate the month of Aviv. That is why the Jews add a moon to it that they call the thirteen RD moon, and they add a month to it that is the month of Adar, because the lunar count is not reaching the month of Aviv. But they are wrong about this because it is not the first factor. The first factor is when nature gives you the first fruits, the green fruits, we see on the chart in yellow. We read that also Aviv, spring, begins the year with the green spikes. So when the Hebrews felt the heat, they sprouted what they had planted three months before or so less, and they saw the green spikes. Well, there they had some biblical ordinances in Joshua 5 verse 11. But first, let's go to read Leviticus 2 verse 14. If you offer the Lord a first fruits offering, you will toast the fire the green spike, and the grain crushed you will offer as an offering of your first fruits. Of what scoop? Of the first green fruits that occur with spring reactivation, anyone who works in the field knows this. We want to add the offering of the Omer. We are going to read it. The Omer offering is mentioned in Leviticus 23 verses 9 and 21 of the Torah. Leviticus 23 verse 9 When ye are come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring the sheaf, Omer, of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Leviticus 23 verses 15 and 16 You shall count from the eve of the second day of Pesach, when an omer of grain is to be brought as an offering, seven complete weeks. The day after the seventh week of your counting will make fifty days, and you shall present a new meal offering to God, Leviticus 23 verse 15. You shall count seven full weeks from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. And for those who do not know about the omer offering, the word omer can be translated as sheaf, an ancient Hebrew dry measure, the tenth part of an ephah. A sheaf of barley or omer of grain is presented as an offering on the second day of Passover. To have an idea, one omer is about roughly two and a half U.S. dry quarts, or ten dry cups. One omer is one U.S. dry cup. An omer is one handful. Some Jews believe the bride is hidden in the omer offering. Imagine that those who belong to the bride are only a small group of believers worldwide who belong to the Church of the Promise. Clarified this, let's continue with the study. 
Then Joshua 5 verse 11 says that on the next day of Passover, they ate the fruit of the land, unleavened bread, and new spikes of wheat were toasted on the same day. They must have roasted the spikes because they were green. It was the first thing they had to give as an offering on the other day of Passover. So I am going to make a comparison with what is happening this year today, April 9th, is the first day of the year for the Jews of the Rabbinate. Many Christians continue to teach this, unfortunately out of date, and teach something that is not true because they use the calendar that the Jews provide and not what Almighty God provided in His Word. And also to those that the man told that he had left his house abandoned in every way. Well, Christians take their example from them. Most of them, not all, and they repeat what the Jews are saying is totally wrong and oblivious to the truth. In the Bible, we find the truth. The truth that the next day, 15 days from the afternoon until the afternoon of the next day, they had to eat and toast the fruits of the first fruit of the barley fruits of the new toasted ears. You will realize that the parameters once you see all the videos and the documentation confirm that the spring in Jerusalem was confirmed and the green spikes were already on March 5th. Now if the green ears were on March 5th, what constitutes the first moon of the year of God? Obviously it will be the next moon, the first full moon with a first flash of light. It becomes that first moon because the reactivation of nature was seen. So they counted 14 days as it is in the Bible, and they counted until Passover, and there they offered the first fruits. So, for all those saying that the year begins on April 9th, if the fruits were sprouted and green on March 5th, how can it be that on April 24th, approximately 50 days later, the first green fruits are delivered to the Lord? They are going to offer a ripe grain. So nature itself is telling them they are wrong. Without a doubt, if they had a temple, they would bring him a ripe grain, which was not what the Lord asked for. There are witnesses in Israel who personally saw the fruits ready on March 5th. Therefore, it is an unequivocal fact that the rabbinate once again makes a mistake, having an erroneous foundation for X or B, to decree a day without taking into account what the remnant in ancient times did, which was to follow God stipulated. We understand that from Aviv to Aviv, from spring to spring, is the year of God and that the returning to the chart from 1948, in the spring of Aviv, Israel had not yet emerged. Israel emerged in 1948 on May 14th. In the three following moons of Aviv, the 80s are marked here. Aviv is mathematically exact until May 2028. These dates are corroborated, and we have also corroborated the moons. If you consider Aviv to Aviv, it will give you 80. You can check it in your calculator, and you will see that you are going to be planted in Aviv in 2028, which is in March in our Gregorian calendar. Spring will be reactivated there. And there will be three more moons because Israel emerged on May 14, 1998, and those three moons are going to be mathematically nailed to May, also to the third moon, and thus the words of our Lord Jesus Christ who said this generation will not pass until all this happens. When you see greening the fig tree, Israel, is eighty years according to Psalm 90. The Lord waited for the most robust until they were eighty years old. 80 years, so to speak, in some way. So the mathematics is exact. We have the entire time parameter corroborated, or rather the Bible corroborates it. They will not tell you this from the pulpits. They will not tell you a date. On the contrary, be very intelligent to spread this information because Satan is furious. He is using even the pulpits to prevent you from knowing the truth revealed in the word I in this new chart we see the beginning of week 70. These are the last seven years that the Lord established for the last time, and we are going to see the exact mathematics of this, which is impressive. I put here the day, March 14th, 2021. This year has 13 moons, and I am talking about what we learned from Aviv to Aviv. The following year, which is the year 2022, has 12 moons, 
The year 2023 has 12 moons, and the year 2024 has 13 moons. Look at the frequency here of the beginning of the 70th week. We all know from the videos that it begins in Passover, but look at this. In the year 2024, it has 13 moons for a significant and very exact reason. If we continue counting, we have in the year 2025 12 moons, 2026 12 moons, 2027 to 2028 marks 13 moons, closing week 70, and the last Passover will end in week 70, September 4th, 2028. Something is going to happen on this date, and this will be explained in another study, because something very, very important is going to happen there until we reach May 14th, 2028. Week 70 begins on the 14th of the third month of the year 2021. It has already started, and now we will focus on this year. Here, we are going to move on to the other graph. I want us to focus from March 11th, 2024, to March 1st, 2025. This is the line we have for this year. Why it has 13 moons and the year of the rapture has to be 13 moons because there is a moon that we can call the 13th moon or the 7th moon that is in the middle of the 13 that it is precisely the one that separates the first 6 months and 6 months and the one that remains alone is the 7th month. As it is written in Leviticus 23 verse 39, this point is the point that marks the middle of the 70th. Week precisely at the moon number 7 at 15 days. This is mathematically exact. It divided half of the 70th week in half of the time. And it will fall on September 18th, 2024. At the 7th moon at 15 days, it marks exactly half. We are going to read Leviticus 23 from 39 to 40, but on the 15th day of the 7th month, when you have gathered the fruit of the land, you will celebrate a feast to the Lord for seven days. And the first day will be a Sabbath, and the eighth day will also be a Sabbath. And you will take the first day, and the eighth day will also be a Sabbath. And on the first day, you will take branches with fruit from beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, branches of leafy trees, and willows from the streams. And you will rejoice before of Jehovah your God for seven days. Revelation 7 verse 9 had come out of every language, people, tribe, and nation. That is, we are going to celebrate this feast in heaven. To understand, see the explanation in the other videos. These are the ones who did not enter the Great Tribulation. See the original, see it in the Greek, the word ek, are those who did not enter the Great Tribulation, they are outside, and they are all together there. They are not the one who went through the Great Tribulation, that's why they were all there. Together. This was explained in another video. And there is symbolic language, too. Do not be confused with the end of Revelation 7. I recommend it to those who have not seen it. This is the moment of fulfillment of the promise that appears in Revelation 3 verse 10. For the Church of Philadelphia. I will guard against the hour of trial coming to the whole earth. No longer can we be on earth. Then, that moment is when the Lord takes us off the earth. The word ek is repeated, which means outside. The church that is taken away is the one that is present with the palms in its hands, just as what is stipulated for the Feast of Tabernacles. The Lord does not take us out of the earth in the Festival of Trumpets. This date is wrong because comes from an incorrect Jewish calendar. Messianism expects it at a feast. Those who don't know are the Christians, who say they are filled with the Spirit. How incredible! The Jews know clearly and are not afraid. In South America or Central America, they get scared when someone mentions the day. In the United States, it is normal to set a date, and here, Christians are afraid of it. They say no one knows the day and hour. Oh Lord! So we all kept quiet and didn't talk anymore. I am not going to stay silent until September 18th. Until that day, I am going to go for my crown. Not even under the water, I will be quiet. If Satan thought I was going to keep calm, well, he can continue talking as he has been doing since the pulpits because now from the pulpits they do not want to remain silent, of course. 
We do not have the school of 40 years ago and the pride that plays a lot against them to recognize that they are wrong. I am talking about those who attack us, not about all pastors. I am speaking of the false teachers of the false shepherds who are in the pulpits and who will go through the fire of the great tribulation. The Lord is waiting for September 18th to make them go through the fire and along with them many who are also preaching below of the pulpits. They defend many false doctrines. So the Lord has revealed the date of His coming, which is September 17th to 18th, which is the middle of the 70th week, where the correct biblical interpretation of Daniel 9 verse 27 is the interpretation that the Lord revealed to us in this last time. This is the private interpretation that we have been given for a long time. Daniel 9 verse 27 says that for another week, he will confirm the covenant with many, and in the middle of the week, he will cease the daily sacrifice and offering. According to the Bible, the sacrifice and offering is the Holy Spirit who is at the head of the Philadelphia and the Saints Church, or also known as the Church of the Promise. Attention to all theologians, all pastors, including astronomers who there saw the perfection of the days and years marked with the moon. The Lord is calling you all to show you what He is revealing in the last time when knowledge will increase. He Himself is giving us this knowledge because this is what His Word says, and we cannot remain silent about this in any way. The one who confirms the covenant is the Messiah, with many, not all. Imagine perfection will cease the sacrifice and offering. According to the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, the sacrifice and the offerings are the actions of the saints. Those of us who are going to be part of the Church of Philadelphia, and look what it says then with the multitude of abominations will come to the desolator. Therefore, the post-tribulation is preached that they will see the Antichrist because they will stay in the Great Tribulation. But to Philadelphia Church is the only one he told, I am coming soon. You can read about it in chapter 3 of Revelation. That is the only church that comes to rescue quickly, and the others that do not conquer are left in bed. I make you go through great tribulation. We are all the church, of course, but the prize of the church, which will be raptured, is not for everyone. No, ladies and gentlemen, they have told you a fantasy story. The church of the rapture is a holy church without spot and without wrinkle, formed by those who listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, who is the main overcomer. We, the assembly that belongs to the church of the promise, the Holy Spirit, the other comforter. So do not listen to the voice of the one who says and repeats what you heard from others when they tell you that no one knows the day and the hour because the Lord has done wonders. You will not get there before Christ and tell him, but I missed this. The Lord gave everything. I have made everything known to you. The Lord never said in his word that the day no one would know. In the Greek, it says that no one has known. We have the evangelical Christian school where these topics are prohibited, and there is a hidden interest that you do not see the day so as not to be 100% perceived for the one who is lukewarm instead of approaching because they continue to be lukewarm. But what a positive change there would be if he listened to the Lord his God to whom he is going to give an account, and to whom he does not want to listen to stay this time of 1,335 days here on earth out of disobedience for preaching from the pulpits things that are not what they do not correspond to the last time. If you hear your leader say that no one knows the day and hour, run away from there. It doesn't matter if there are four walls with a cross wherever you are. Run away. I don't even have time to respond to the number of people who write to me daily saying they don't have churches, they don't have an idea, and I can't even put them in my groups because we are full. Then, they will account for all this, and this account will begin. On September 18th, the Lord will pay with good pay because He said, first of all, He is fair and told be worthy of escaping. So whoever does not escape will not be worthy. I imagine how terrifying all this will be. 
Humanly, I want no one to pass, but because they are arrogant and haughty, because they thought that with God they could play and preach anything, and they believed that people could be denigrated, they were going to stay. The Lord on this day is challenging you all to repent before your day will come because the great day of the Lord is approaching. It is approaching in gigantic steps because it is coming so quickly and we have less than two months left. Thank God I have an army of watchmen praying day and night and hundreds of thousands who will convert in the last time. Just as John dedicated six months before and announced the coming of Jesus Christ. We have also been doing the same for six months before September 18th. I don't know why pastors wrote that no one knows the day and time. Instead of looking at it in an edifying way and saying there is a man of God here who is studying and how many hours he will spend and dedicate himself to reading the Bible, studying, and praying, they are to destroy. When people are called to destroy, we must move away and much more so in recent times. Don't be afraid, and don't shut your mouth. We are not in time to subject ourselves to people who do not have biblical revelation from the Lord since there are strong arguments here, not only with biblical proof, but also dreams and visions. He who has to believe will believe, and he who does not have to believe will not. The Lord is the one who hardens the heart and the one who softens it. Our goal is to be obedient and preach the word revealed in the Bible. With this, we now have 11 biblical points that support this date. We have made it very clear that the year of the Lord is constituted from Aviv to Aviv, from spring to spring. That's why it's 80 years old. We have also made it very clear that the last week of the Lord is not there. Again, by chance, it is stipulated in that way so that it coincides that when there are thirteen moons, the Lord will take us out. The middle moon marks the middle of the seventieth week. As he said, he made everything with the moon and the sun and marked the times. Therefore, we are going to conclude this study. I hope this information bless you. Maranatha, until next time.